Hello, and welcome to the third episode of Wow Rome Burns. We as humans enjoy the security of solid earth beneath us. We step out of our door each day, certain that the ground beneath our feet will be there. But sometimes Mother Nature loves to remind us that while humans may think of themselves as masters of the natural world, we are merely another species at the mercy of this planet's tectonic plates. But don't worry, the ground is still stable here. So sit back, relax, and let me tell you a story while Rome burns. Founded sometime in the 4th century BCE, the city of Antioch quickly rose to prominence as the court seat and capital of the western Seleucid Empire, one of the splinter empires that formed out of the ashes of Alexander the Great's empire. But more on him in another episode. The city eventually passed into the protection of Rome along with Syria in 64 BCE. As a result, the city began a series of renovations that would bring it more in line with the culture, attitudes, and architecture of their Roman protectors. Consuls such as Julius Caesar, emperors such as Augustus and Commodus would visit Antioch, which gives you an idea of just how important this city was in the eastern part of the Roman Empire. A Roman forum, a hippodrome, bathhouses, and other amenities of Rome could all be found in this ancient city. It seemed that the Hellenized Romans, who had adopted aspects of Greek culture into their own, were now returning the favor to the Greeks. Under the rule of the Roman Empire, and later by the Byzantine Empire, Antioch experienced relative peace and prosperity. Their population exploded, and the city became a hotbed for the budding Christian church, serving as one of the five seats of ecclesiastical power in the early days of the church. But all of that peace and prosperity could not protect it from the powers of the earth and the awesome display of force that its tectonic plates put on. The area around Antioch was, and still is, a hotbed of tectonic activity. The ruins of the old city, and the location of the current city of Antakya, sit close to a complex triple junction of faults that have been the source of seismic activity for more than 2,000 years of recorded history. The people of Antioch were no strangers to earthquakes, and would in fact suffer from six major earthquakes and several minor earthquakes throughout the city's history. Our story today concerns the Antioch earthquake of 526 CE. Imagine for a moment, you are a merchant setting up in town. Antioch is just one of your stopovers on your trips throughout the Byzantine Empire. Antioch today, Constantinople in a few weeks, and then after that, a quick trip over to Alexandria to resupply. Your trade takes you all over the empire, and you enjoy relative protection and security in what you do for a living. As you set up shop in the market square, you take in the beauty of this city. It is a vibrant, multicultural metropolis. The Christian church has a strong presence here and enjoys a lot of freedom to practice their beliefs. Peoples from the Far East, Africa, and Europe all come here to trade, worship, and explore. A truly wonderful spot to set up shop for a few days. Some children can be seen chasing each other laughing and playing, as children have done for centuries and centuries. You've been set up for a few hours, and the sun will reach high noon very soon. Suddenly, a violent shaking of the ground rips through the earth. 
Stone begins to fall from above as the buildings around you shake violently. The seismic waves crashing and rolling through the city. You abandon your cart and flee from the carnage, all hopes of profit quickly fleeing your mind and being replaced by a desire, a need to survive this devastation. You say a silent prayer to whichever god you happen to worship as you flee. You hear screams and crashes as buildings turn to rubble around you. Wood splinters, stone shatter, glass breaks, and the ground seems to open up around you as you flee the city. You reach the Orontes River and realize that the bridge has fallen into the rushing waters below. You don't have much more time to think when you are struck on the head by a piece of debris and knocked unconscious. You awaken slowly, your vision blurred by the concussion you just sustained. Feeling the back of your head tentatively, you feel only a large bump, but no blood. There's no way to know for sure how long you were knocked out, but a quick glance at the sun shows that it is now early afternoon, so at least a couple of hours. Sitting up slowly, rubbing your head, you finally look around and get a view of the city. You see nothing but shattered buildings, broken bodies, and devastation as far as the eye can see. The earthquake that hit Antioch in May of 526 CE was a devastating earthquake that leveled the entire city, and it's estimated that the entire city's population of 250,000 people died as a result of the earthquake and its aftermath. Additionally, the city was hit with aftershocks as a result of this quake for the next 18 months. The day following the earthquake, a fire broke out that swallowed what was left of the city, reducing it to ashes and embers. The Byzantine emperor, ruling at the time of the quake, was Justin I. In his capital of Constantinople, present-day Istanbul, the news reports came to the emperor slowly. After hearing of the extent of the damage and the hundreds of thousands of souls who lost their lives, the emperor removed his crown and crimson cloak, the symbols of his royal position. He was now dressed as a common man. Singing songs of lamentation, he wandered through the streets of the great city. He went into the church known as the Hagia Irene and wept for his subjects, who had died so needlessly in this act of nature. His heart broke for his people, and he was inconsolable. Eventually, Emperor Justin I sent ambassadors to assess the damage, provide aid, and begin overseeing reconstruction. The constant aftershocks made this difficult, and progress on rebuilding Antioch was slow. The driving force behind the emperor's desire to see Antioch rebuilt was that the city stood as a major bulwark against the threat of the Sassanid Empire to the east. First, the great church of Antioch was rebuilt, more grand than the previous church had been. As Antioch was rebuilt and the crown passed from Justin I to Justinian I, the city was renamed to Theopolis, the city of God. However, any power in such names or symbols of religion was not enough to stand against the fate that history had in store for this city. During a war between the Byzantine and Sassanid empires, the city of Antioch was sacked by the invading Persian armies. Thousands lost their lives. Gold and treasures and relics were taken as prizes of war the population of Antioch, which had grown to 300,000 in just 14 short years, was deported to Mesopotamia under the orders of the Sassanid king. 
While the site of Antioch would go on to be used as a settlement for centuries to come, it would never regain its former status as a city of importance and prestige within the Byzantine Empire. The earthquake in Antioch was a tragic event that shook everyone in the Byzantine Empire to their core, from commoner up to and including the emperor himself. Hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives on an otherwise unimportant date in May of 526 CE. The devastation experienced by the citizens of Antioch has been revisited upon countless cities throughout history and will continue as long as Earth's tectonic plates continue to move. While we as humans may see ourselves as masters of the natural world, we must always remember that we are simply living at the mercy of Mother Nature. Thank you for listening to While wow Rome Burns. Our next episode releases August 30th, 2020. While Rome Burns is part of the One Up Podcast Network. For more shows, cast info, or to reach out to us, check out our website, oneuppodcasts.com. And be sure to leave us a review on iTunes so that we can continue to make this show. Today's background music is Before the Storm by TabletopAudio.com under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Non-Derivatives 4.0 International License. Find more of their work at TabletopAudio.com Cover art by Igor Nunes. You can contact him for commissions on Twitter at WeCan. That's W-H-Y-C-C-A-N. Find more of his work by going to wecan.artstation.com. Thank you so much for listening.